One important task of compositing is motion tracking. Nuke provides the tracker node for this purpose. The tracker has been updated for version 7 and is much more powerful and also easier to use. I brought in some footage of a man walking down the street with a moving camera. This would be a great place to try motion tracking. For example, I can motion track this sticker on this post and then replace it with something else. Let's give that a try. Go back to the first frame, select the read node, right mouse button click, and choose transform tracker. Again, this has been redesigned for version 7. Right here you have a track field. This is where you add tracks. You can have one track or as many tracks as you want. I'll click the add track button. The tracks listed here is track 1. And it shows me what I want to track, translate, rotate, and or scale. I'm just going to do translate for now, but if you wanted to, you could turn on rotate and scale also. Associated with that is the anchor box for track 1 in the viewer. You can click drag the center of this to move it. I'll go ahead and position this over this sticker. The inner box is a pattern box. That's the pattern you're trying to track over time. You can scale this by click dragging the ends. The outer box is a search box. This is where the node goes if it has a hard time finding the pattern. Now with this version there's a new zoom window right here. One nice feature is you can shift click drag to zoom in and out. So you can see the pixels really closely. Another thing you can do is click drag with your mouse in this area to position the entire box. Now I'll zoom back out. Now I've positioned the anchor box for track one on the first frame. I can approach this as a more traditional transform tracking where I go straight to my track buttons, press those, and let the program analyze the footage to create a motion path. The other way to do it is to actually set several keyframes. That's where you set keyframes over time and let the program analyze between those. This will help make sure that the resulting motion path is more accurate. Let's give that a try. Because I've placed my track one box on the first frame already, I get the first keyframe for free. I'll see the blue dash right here. Then I can go to a different keyframe, say frame 195, and reposition the box. As soon as I do that, I get a new keyframe plus a motion path. Once again, I can use my zoom window to fine tune the position. Now you also notice there's two boxes now up here at the top. These are keyframe patches. It shows you what's underneath that box for each of those keyframes. You can click on those patches to compare them. The view of the patch is put into the zoom window. So it's a great way to make sure that your positioning is accurate. If you go back and forth, ideally you should see the pattern stay static and not move around. You can always go ahead and add some more keyframes. For example, I'll go to frame 200. This one's tricky because a man's arm covers up the sticker. I can still position this box as best I can to make it in the same relative position. As soon as I do that, I get a third keyframe patch. Now I can compare the keyframe positions. Try to fine tune this last keyframe to make it more accurate. It looks like the relative position of that post and that handrail don't really change between keyframes. Once I have a few keyframes, I can then analyze. I'm not going to use my regular track buttons. Instead, I'm going to use a special button right here, which is called Key Track All. That will track between the keyframes, take the keyframes into account as it tries to determine the best motion path. Let's give that a try. It's going to analyze forward. When it's finished, give me a motion path. Once it's done, you can play it back and see how well the track follows the pattern. It's looking pretty good, however, at the very end, because of the overlap of the arm, it gets confused for two frames. Here's a nice feature of this system. I'm going to zoom in here, and then what I can do is reposition this box on one of the bad frames, for instance on frame 199. Click drag it. It actually updates the surrounding keyframes. It takes into account the keyframes already set, takes into account the updated position, and then recalculates the path in that area. In order to improve the motion path at this point, I would need to spend more time adjusting keyframes. And in fact, I can add additional ones if I need to. I also always have the option to go back to any of my track buttons and reanalyze either part of the timeline or the entire timeline, either forward or backward. It's going to take a few minutes for me to adjust this, so I'm going to fast forward. All right, so I'm back and I've improved the motion path. So basically I spent more time adjusting keyframes for the problem areas near the end of the timeline. If you watch the zoom box, you'll see the pattern is more stable now.
Now this is not the only way to see how accurate the path is. There's another new button for version 7, which is right here. This is the Show Error on Track button. If you click that, it color codes the motion path. The color of each point on the motion path indicates the error value generated by the node. And the error represents the confidence with which the node has identified the pattern for that frame with the patterns established by the keyframes. So in other words, green is good. Now in order to demonstrate what it looks like when it's not so good, what I can do is remove some of these keyframes and recalculate. To delete, just select the patch and press the Delete Key button. Let's say also that I rushed the placement of my last keyframe. It's going to recalculate automatically because I moved that box for that frame. So yellow to orange to red indicates a rising error value. I want to undo this, Control or Command Z to go back to my previous version of the motion path. I'll fast forward. Now we're back with a good motion path with the five keyframes. Now that we have a good path, we can export the data. You can go to this menu and pick the style of data you want to export. Now if you have four tracks, you can use a corner pin. In this case, we want to use match move, so I'll set that to match move and then click the Create button. That creates a transform node that's hooked up to the tracker via an expression. If I open up the transform node, I'll see the transit rotate scale and center is linked via the expression to the tracker. Now I can plug something into the transform to have it follow that motion path. Let me close all these windows. Now in order to keep my background, I'm going to make a new merge node. I'll press the M key. I'll hook up the B to the read one node, that's the background hook up A to the new transform node, and hook the viewer into the merge node. Now I just need something to match move. I could bring in a read file with a bitmap, or in this case I'll just bring in a constant to test this. So image constant. I'll change the color of the constant so it's more interesting, like this green. Now I'll change the format. Initially the constant's the same size as the project. I'm going to pick something smaller. Now if you don't see a resolution you like, you can always make a brand new one if you just click the new button and enter a new name and new size. I made one already that's called square 75, and that's just 75 by 75 pixels. I'll go ahead and hook that up. Now one issue here is the constants placed at the bottom left-hand corner of the composition. I can see that if I go to the first frame of the timeline. It's right here where 0, 0 is. What I can do though is line it up with where the center of the motion path is by adding one more transform node. I'll select the constant and press the T key. Now I do need to see the motion path, so I'll reopen the tracker. Now what I can do is grab the transform handle for the constant and move it so it lines up with the center of the anchor box. I'll zoom in here so I can see this better. And position that until it lines up right there in the center. Now I can close all these windows and play it back. And now that new constant follows where that sticker was. There's still a few issues. For instance, I would have to rotoscope to get it behind this man's arm, but the basic motion tracking is now working. So here's a quick introduction to the new tracker in Nuke.